Should Christians vote? A lot of people will tell you yes. However, what does the Bible really say? Should we be involved in the politics of this world? Where do we stand as true believers and followers of Jesus Christ? In this video, we are going to look into a very controversial topic. So let's settle this issue once and for all in this eye-opening video. Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode here on our channel. I'm Joshua Infantado of Becoming Christians Academy, the best online course for you if you want to be a zealous, faithful, and blessed child of God. Today, I would like to answer the question, should Christians vote and participate in the politics of this world? Every election season, we have seen how politicians will dramatically work their way to office. More often than not, they would use black propaganda or dirty political tactics just to put their opponents into a dark light. It is true that the majority of people believe that it is our duty to cast our votes. From civic schools to national televisions, voting is considered to be a patriotic duty that all of us must do. People who vote are called responsible citizens and they are even praised. They are called heroes and they are rewarded for their actions. In the midst of the political chaos and mess, should Christians vote? This is an important question that we must face and the answer is quite simple and plain. Christians should not vote. They should not even be found endorsing any candidate. In this video, let me share with you the 10 reasons Christians are discouraged to vote and participate in local or national elections. Number one, being a political saves us from debates and divisions. The Bible condemns division in strongest sense. We read that in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 and Romans 16 verse 17 to 18. There is no doubt that people will have their own views when it comes to politics. People have their own bets and candidates. I personally have seen close friends and families fight over who should win the election. Most often than not, the situation leads to bitterness and dispute. Now imagine if the same thing will happen within the church because of secular politics. Sometimes people fight so hard for their candidates who probably wouldn't even know that they existed. This is highly possible to happen if the church gets involved with politics. Politics breeds division and not unity, both at the church level and national level. Number two, voting is subject to human weaknesses. Voting is based on the decisions of human beings and therefore subject to human weaknesses. As hard as we would like to see a change in our government and our nation, we will utterly fail. Democracy can be considered as one of the best forms of government. However, we know that humans are not designed to rule over other humans. All we have to do is step back and see the bigger picture. Study history and you will find failed governments are ruled by selfish human nature. Number three, most politicians are people pleasers rather than God pleasers. For a politician to win, he or she has to please the people. They would do everything just to get people's votes. More often than not, that politician has to compromise his or her moral principles just to meet the needs of everyone. Number four, this whole world is deceived. We read in Revelation 12 verse 9 that this world is deceived. For this reason, many people are blinded to the truth. We can see Satan's deception all over the world and in every fabric of our society, including politics. No matter who you vote for, we really don't have the right tools to discern their heart. Therefore, we will just ultimately make the wrong choice in choosing a candidate. Number five, Satan is the God of this world. We read in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 that Satan is the God of this world. He is the evil force behind every government. So, why would a Christian participate in politics when we know that Satan controls it? Of course, God is in ultimate control. 
He can use anything to accomplish his will and purpose and even the politics of this world. But for now, we just have to let God handle this and be careful not to put things in our own hands. Number six, we are called to be separate from the world. As we mentioned above, this world is ruled by Satan. Light and darkness can't mix. That's the reason you can read, come out from among them and be separate. That's 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Moreover, the Apostle John wrote in his epistle, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, and the last of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the last thereof, but that he doeth the will of God abides forever. That's 1 John 2, 15-16. Number 7, Jesus will not participate in politics today. Obviously, we are called Christians because we follow Christ. We are to copy Jesus, or properly known as Joshua the Messiah. If Christ is here on earth today, will you actually see him endorsing anyone? Will he be participating in this world's politics? Obviously not. And then number eight, Christians are part of God's kingdom. We know that this is Satan's world. Remember the conversation between Christ and Pontius Pilate? Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Mark very well the words of Jesus Christ here. He said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. That's John 18 verse 36. Notice that this is not the kingdom of Jesus. He further said that we must not fight and go to any war because our ultimate allegiance is to God and not to any human government. When we cast our vote, we simply acknowledge that we are part of this world's government instead of being part of God's kingdom. So let's go to number nine. We are ambassadors of Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, we read that we are called ambassadors for Christ. In addition to this, Paul also mentioned, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Ephesians 3 verse 20. What are ambassadors? Ambassadors are accredited diplomats who are sent by a country as their official representatives to a foreign country. We are to become representatives of Christ's coming kingdom. Do you see any ambassador or foreign citizen casting their votes in a foreign land? Of course not. That's why we must be ambassadors and ambassadors don't vote. Let's go to number 10, the final one. There's no worthy candidate. Study the politics of this world. If anyone wants to win the election, he or she needs to exalt and praise himself or herself. That person needs to tell the people why they should vote for him or her. A person needs to show people how he or she is worthy of their vote. In effect, telling the people how good he is or how good she is. Whether that person is telling the truth or not, we can see how self-centered politicians can be. They would say how intelligent, how experienced they are, how qualified, talented, and how great they are while demeaning their opponents. Are you sure you want to vote for a person like that? What did Jesus say to people like them? He said in Luke 14 verse 11, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, here are my final words, just to recap. Christians should stop believing that they can fix this world's government. We should stop thinking that we can influence the government to be godly. Jesus came to this world not trying to improve our government. Rather, he came and announced the coming kingdom of God. Instead of improving the government of this world, Christ announced that the kingdom of God will come here on earth. He will not change the government, but rather he will replace it 
with the perfect kingdom of our Father in heaven. No human government can bring lasting peace and prosperity, no matter who you vote for and no matter who will assume the highest office in the human government. Biblical prophecies tell us that things will get even worse as we approach the end time. It is only the kingdom of God that will make this world a better place to live in. Therefore, let us all pray, Thy kingdom come. Thank you so much for tuning in. The government of this world is going to end as what we read in biblical prophecies. So if you wish to learn more about Bible prophecies, I highly recommend you request the free ebook, Signs of the Age, 21 Bible Prophecies That Must Be Fulfilled Before Jesus Christ Return. I have included the download link in the description box. With that, I hope that you have learned something new today. I know this is a fairly controversial topic, so I want to hear from you as well. Leave a comment below and let's learn from each other. With that, I would like to say goodbye and see you the next time. I'm Joshua Infantado of Becoming Christians Academy, praying that God will bless us all with His love, truth, and grace. Hello friends, I need your help. If this is not too much to ask, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. This should only take 5 seconds of your time, but this simple gesture would help me reach more people and share the Word of God with the rest of the world. You have the power to make a difference in people's lives.